It's a third and 27 now for Lehigh, way back on their own 17-yard line. Marty Horn is chased Green back pass. to the five, screens it out to the 15, 20, 25, 30. Good run, and finally getting knocked out of bounds, almost at the 40-yard line was Ed Godbolt. Just short of the first down. He nearly had a, the entire sideline there, but he was dancing down it and uh, finally had to uh, get pushed out of bounds across the 40-yard line. Excellent See, call here. At the 44. Eddie Godball, who's doing about everything that Lehigh has done right today, catches the ball, makes a fine run, picks up some fine downfield blocking, and just barely misses the first down. He reached for it, but just went out of bounds right in front of it. Bob Shar with two interceptions today, made the saving tackle. Char, by the way, went out of the Princeton game with a concussion. They weren't sure that he'd uh, able to come back, but he said he wasn't going to miss this one. Fourth down and one. Godball carrying. He's got the first down. Breaks out at the 40. Still on his feet. 35-30 down to the 25-yard line. Ed Godball, uh, a brilliant 30. individual effort once he got across that 50-yard line. 30-yard run for Eddie Godball. That's the best Lehigh offensive internal run in the ball game. The engineers have gotten as close as the seven-yard line, but they've not gotten any closer in this game. Osler made a nice block and kicked the defensive end out there, which cleared the way for Godbolt. Eddie Godbolt's closing out a, a real fine career with Lehigh, doing it in fine style in front of some of the Lehigh fans that he's uh, grown up with. Ball carried now and a fine run by Dom La Selva. And he brings the ball down inside the 15-yard line, which will be close to another first down for Lehigh. Godbolt has now passed the 100-yard mark for the game, 24 carries and 107 yards. You see La Silva, a sophomore from Pottsville, Pennsylvania, and one of the hosts for Lehigh for next year. 202 pounds, 19 years old. No yardage at all. This time, uh, perhaps two as he works his way across the 15-yard line and gets down to around the 13. Met there by Green, Wagner, King. The ball is at the 14-yard line. We have two minutes and five seconds remaining in the third quarter. Lafayette out in front of Lehigh by a score of 34 to nothing in the 118th meeting between the two. On the counter play, Godbold is going and he is gone from the 14-yard line. Lehigh's now on the board with 151 left in the game. A sprint draw to Ed Godbold. As Marty Horn pulled to his left side, he gave the, the ball back to Godbold on the right side and literally went untouched into the end zone. And with 151 remaining in the third quarter, Lehigh finally gets on the board. It's 34 to 6. And Lehigh's in trying to, for the two-point conversion. They've got a lot of space to make up, and uh, they'll go for two instead of one here. Following the 13-yard for a two-point conversion. Two-point try now, and... Uh, Offsides all over the place, and we'll play it all over again. Move Lehigh back five yards for illegal procedure. When you're going for two, that's, uh, that's tough. Ball back now at the seven-yard line, and uh, the engineers will play it all over again. Back they come, and nowhere. Can't run with that ball. Otherwise, there ought to be a way the defending team can pick up a couple of points if they can get to the other goal line, but they haven't put that score in yet, and so the extra point try of two fails, and with 151 remaining in the third quarter, the score is now Lafayette 34 and Lehigh 6. That was Eric Keenley, the 6'4", uh, 220-pound junior defensive end from New Rochelle, New York, who got to uh, horn on that particular play. the conclusion of the game, at the end of the game, 
Today's telecast being originated through the color television facilities of WLVT, Channel 39, public television in the Lehigh Valley. And we hope that wherever you are, you're enjoying this football game. I'm sure Le from Fisher Field. I'm sure Lehigh's fans never expected to see such a large scoring game. And they're used to seeing uh, really good defense. And frankly, the defense hasn't played that bad except for a couple plays. But uh, those plays have haunted them. Ball is caught in the end zone. And there will be a touchback and brought out to the 20-yard line. And I think uh, as a testament to that, uh, the most points scored against Lehigh this year was 21 that Colgate scored in the second game of the season. And uh, Delaware got 20 and Rhode Island got 20, but Lafayette has scored 34. Ball carried by Craig Williams. I think one of the significant factors to the Lafayette season is uh, right now they're a very strong team. They lost those two early games, the first two games of the season. They've, play, they've been playing with a number of freshmen, particularly in the front seven on defense, and they've just matured through the season. They've become a much better ball club. No gain on the play. It'll be second down and ten. Under a minute and a half remaining here in the third quarter. Novak still in, even though his team is up by quite a few. Cuyo carrying, a flag goes down. Stop made by Yusilaitis for Lehigh. I suspect this is a holding penalty here. Personal foul, 91. Foul on Lehigh, personal foul, and that will be a 15-yarder. We're starting to look at Murphy's Law here. And so uh, just when it looked like the Leopards were going to be bottled up on that last offensive sequence, they pick up the first down on the personal foul, brings the ball out to the 36-yard line. With the exception of some of the personal fouls in this game, it's been a relatively errorless ball game. Not many penalties at all. Corbo out wide, left, gatehouse inside. Cuyos swings out now to the left. Fake counter pass up the middle is underthrown and incomplete at the 38-yard line. Well, that was not one of Novak's better efforts by any stretch of the imagination. Remarkable, Ed, that uh, Lafayette has uh, pretty much stayed with their starting team here through three periods of football with a 28-point lead, but I have a feeling we're going to see a lot of new maroon jerseys coming in in that fourth quarter. Moving into the shotgun once again on the second and 10 situation now for the Leopards. Time the ball is handed off to Pugliard, and he gets to about the 35-yard line. That's one of the few times you're going to see a running play out of that formation. With respect to keeping the uh, starting team in shell, I mentioned uh, earlier that uh, Lafayette lost a big lead in the Princeton game, and they lost it quite quickly. I, I don't think that in a game as important to this as uh, to the Lafayette program that they're interested in, in uh, putting in their reserves in quite this early. Craig Williams on that last carry, not Nick Cuyos, and on the play, the ball is brought out to the 35-yard line. This could be the last play of the period unless it's an incomplete pass under 10 seconds remaining. Here's one out way downfield. Nobody there overthrown. The scoreboard clock is out. And I believe that will be the end of the third quarter. The score at the end of three periods of football is Lafayette 34 and Lehigh 6. Major funding for today's telecast is made possible by Banco Beverage Company, Allentown, Pennsylvania. And by Strode, one of America's premium beers from Detroit, Michigan, and brewed locally in the Lehigh Valley. Additional funding was provided by Deal Mayflower Moving and Storage Company, 
moving specialists for home, office, and industry. Hasgo Manufacturing, bulk material flow aid specialists, manufacturers of industrial hose, belting, urethanes, and plastics for industry, municipalities, and the mining communities throughout the United States. First Valley Bank, serving the financial needs of Northeastern Pennsylvania. Lehigh University and the Lehigh University Alumni Association. Lafayette College and Channel 39 membership contributions as a public service to friends of the colleges and to their alumni everywhere. We continue with fourth period action here at Fisher Field. Shell Siegel bringing you the play-by-play. -play. Ed Wetzel handling color for Lafayette and Jerry Berger for Lehigh. It is a fourth down situation for the Lafayette Leopards. One of the few times they have been forced to punt the football today, leading in the game by a score of 34 to 6. Fine kick coming up field. Ball is for, fair catch by Godbolt at the 35 yard line. It's been an ideal day for football. Mild and temperature in the low 50s. Certainly a far cry from last week, the moravian Muhlenberg game, where a blustery wind rocked the stands and everybody else. There should be few doubts, Shell, what Lehigh has to do here in the last 15 minutes. They're going to have to put the ball in the air. And to start it off, it's Horn. Downfield, Hunt has it, and he's out of bounds inside the Lafayette 35-yard line. That was an example of a fine pass and a beautiful reception. Jeff Hunt was in the proper place at the proper time, Jerry. Well, Hunt starts going across the field and then turn it up the sideline and, and Lafayette's man stops. Horn looks down, starts to throw, and then throws a strike to Hunt. Big target, 6'5 out of Nazareth, PA. It was laid in beautifully right between the two defenders. Here's Eddie Godbolt on the carry. He's inside the 25 down to the 24-yard line. Stop made by Anderson and Marr on that play. Lehigh can only hope to strike quickly here, get the ball back and strike again. And even at that point in time, they still have their work cut out for them. Godbolt carrying and he gets down around the 20 yard line, but every time that ball gets carried on the ground, you lose another 20 30 seconds and uh, time of course becoming a major factor for lehigh the engineers trailed at the half by a score of 24 to nothing lafayette put 10 more on the boards in the third quarter and at this point it's a 34 to 6 game going to measure for the first down at the 20 yard line Inches short. One of the great mysteries of football is uh, how an official in the midst of 10 or 15 bodies can figure out how to put the ball down in the right place. <laughs> I always thought one of the great mysteries, Ed, was how they throw a football around from one official to another, and then all of a sudden it becomes a matter of a quarter of an inch <laughs> on a first down, and they always manage to find a way. There's a fumble, and... I believe the Leopards have recovered it at the 22-yard line. Bob Marr, the senior co-captain from Bethel Park, came away with the fumble. A missed handoff to John Osler. That is Marr's first fumble recovery of the season. And so, just when it looked like Lehigh was going to get another touchdown generated or geese get close in at the 20 yard line the engineers fumble the ball away and the leopards have taken it back on the turnover at the 22 yard line a lot of people at south mountain over in bethlehem had a lot of odds at that point in time novak still in at quarterback now Cuyos is the deep man novak's gonna throw it again flare pass complete 20 out to the 27 yard line Shy go in to make the stop. Pass was complete to Cuyos. Lafayette's credit, they're not sitting on the lead, and 
That's one way of losing a football game that happens all the time is you sort of sit on your laurels and somebody catches up, you lose the momentum, and you can't get it back. Lafayette has not let Lehigh get the momentum in this game. Here we see John Shigo, Lehigh's defensive signal caller. You just can't say enough about this guy. What a superb linebacker. Second down and four. Inside man, Craig Williams, and he busts another one. I tell you, he really takes the defenders with him. He gets out around the 40-yard line. As we've alluded to all along, that uh, from the line of scrimmage, this game is really not that lopsided. Here we see Williams making a first down on a nice run. Dave Mecca comes up to tackle Williams high, and Williams just about ran over him. But Lehigh actually leads in the game They have uh, in first downs. They have 16 first downs to 14 for Lafayette. At 220 pounds, Craig Williams really can turn it on. And you don't get a lot of momentum when you start running from that inside formation on the eye. You don't get a chance to get really worked up, but he certainly gets up enough. Novak hits a spot pass complete at the 46-yard line. It'll be short of a first down, but good for a six-yard pickup. Dan Isla on the tackle. But Lafayette's just looking to get yardage on first down, and they've been able to do that. They've had short second and short and third, which makes your signal calling a lot easier. Nothing fancy about that play. Corbo just runs out about three yards, turns around, and Novak hits him with the ball. Corbo, by the way, is the second leading receiver for Lafayette on the year. He's uh, going into the game at 572 yards and a 16.8 average per reception. The ball is at the 49-yard line, second down and four, 11.55 remaining in the football game. Second man throw is Cuyos, and he gets to the 49-yard line. It'll be short of a first down by about a yard. Lafayette. Out in front of Lehigh, 34 to 6. And on the basis of some very long runs, three of the Lafayette touchdowns have been for more than 50 yards today. Priest ran a punt back 92 yards. Hanley, an interception 54 yards. And Williams, on a quick opener, went 79 yards. Gatehouse has the fourth touchdown, which was a 14-yard pass from Novak. And Petty has kicked two field goals. And that's the 34 points for the Lafayette Leopards. And I believe we'll have uh, too much time. Eleven minutes and seven seconds remaining, and that's the call. It's uh, too much time for Lafayette. There has to be much credit given to Bill Russo for turning this program around. Uh, a few years back, there was a lot of sentiment as to whether this game was starting to lose some of the shine that it always had because La Lafayette was reasonably being dominated by Lehigh. But these last two years have really turned that around. And with the underclassmen that Lafayette's showing today, it looks like uh, that's going to be the case for several years to come. The only question mark they have on the Lafayette campus is how long they can keep Bill Russo around here. Third down and six. Novak got some time up the middle. Corbo complete inside Lehigh territory at the 47. Here we see Novak dropping back. Corbo just on a little slant over the middle. Novak right on the money. Coming into today's game, Frank was uh, completed 60% of his passes. Very fine record. Ball is at the 45-yard line. 10 minutes and 20 seconds remaining in the game. The Leopards have picked up another first down. And down goes Novak at the 40-yard line. One of the things we haven't mentioned today, but I, I don't, I, I think we must do it, is give some credit to this Lafayette offensive line. Uh, Novak has uh, had tremendous protections today. Clifford, Tobias, Yogan, Llewellyn, and Saul. Uh, they average 255 pounds up front, really one of the largest offensive lines in Division I AA football. Now they shift into the slot left. Back goes Novak. And the ball is given on the draw to Williams. This time he has a little trouble getting across the 40 to the 39. Chicago, Mecca, and Isla. Those were days, of course, when the, the linemen threw balls. Were you doing the play-by-play -play then, Phil? No, but it's, from a quarterback standpoint, it's hard to believe that the first touchdown pass is thrown by a tackle.
Third down, three to go. Ball is at the 38-yard line. The Leopards in maroon, moving it. Cuyos trying to make first down yardage and will be short as he gets to the 37. Well, we see a, uh, Bob Shaw is going to come on now and punt it, try to keep it Lehigh deep in their own end. Last time Lehigh tried to block the punt, doesn't look like they're coming with it this time. Fourth down and two. Bad pass from center, and the kick is a beauty. And it goes into the end zone in the air, better than 55 yards. So we have eight minutes and eight seconds remaining in the game now, and Lafayette retains the lead of 34 to 6. The Suns even come out here on Fisher Field. That must be for Lafayette's convenience. The uh, breeze, if there is any, has not been a factor at all. It's been a very, very mild day. The ball is at the 20-yard line. Horn hands off to Godbold, and he gets perhaps a yard out to the 21-yard line. Mike King once again in on the tackle. Mike said a real good day for the Leopards. Second down and 10, no gain on it. Again, Lehigh's just in a situation where they're gonna have to stand back and throw the ball with Lafayette knowing full well that's what they're gonna do. Horn looks right, left, and he's got nowhere to go. And he's going to be smothered back on the seven yard line. Everybody in the field knows you're going to throw the ball, and uh, your quarterback does not have an easy time on it. Gutman, Green, and King applying the pressure. Pat Pazzetti, by the way, uh, will be featured on a Channel 39 program a little bit later on in the year. Pat associated with the boys' club uh, activities in Bethlehem, and he threw Lehigh's first touchdown pass way back in the Lehigh Lafayette series back in 1912. Brian Gutman's fourth quarterback sack today. Third down and 23, and this is a situation Jerry Lehigh has been in fairly frequently today. Third and long yardage, ball carried out to the 17-yard line, at least a half a dozen times. Lehigh has had more than third and 20 to go in the game. And they're gonna have to do something they certainly don't want to do at this point in the game, and that's punt the ball away. I thought Godball had a first down here, but Dave Wagner made a nice saving ankle tackle. About three yards shy of the first down. Well, Priest and Green deep once again. Number 45 is Priest. He is on the near side and Green on the far side. Priest has run one back 92 yards already today for a touchdown. And the kick comes up the field and Green will take it at midfield and heads upfield and gets to about the 43-yard line, and the Leopards have good field position again. Okay, here's a piece of sports trivia if you think you know football. In the 1918 game, Shooks Dowd from Lehigh ran 115 yards for a touchdown. How do you run 115 yards? you got to run five of them backwards, play. I think. No. <laughs> he ran the wrong way. I was right. <laughs> <laughs> One that... Uh, I wish I would agree that I, I saw that beforehand, <laughs> but I didn't. <laughs> long one downfield, and Corbo is bumped, but it's intercepted. No interference call. The engineer is coming back with it. 25, 30, up to the 32-yard line. It's Dan Islow, Jr. from New York City on the, on the interception for Lehigh. Well, there was definitely contact before that pass was caught. I guess the official considered it incidental contact, but you see here as the ball's coming down, definitely contact between the two receivers. Tuck that ball away. Pumps 
Once, twice, complete. Jeff Hunt up at the 45-yard line. Remember, we'll have the announcement of the most valuable player right at the conclusion of the ball game. First down, 48. Ball carried across the 50, finally gets down into Leopard territory. God bolts now 28 carries for 134 yards in the game. You know, it's very hard, Ed, I guess, uh, Jerry, to, to really pick out an individual standout in this game for, for Lafayette. So we, we had to vote, didn't have a chance to consult, but I, I'd have to give my vote to uh, Craig Williams right now. Right. Although, uh, you know, the scoring has been divided among Gatehouse, Priest, Hanley, Petty, Williams, Novak's done a good job at quarterback. Cer Lehigh's certainly this guy who just ran the ball is certainly in consideration for that, too. Eddie Godbolt's just had one great day for Lehigh, but he can't do it all, and uh, the score is just not indicative of the kind of play he's had today. Anyway. I think we should give it to an offensive lineman. I'm tired of all these running backs and quarterbacks getting these awards. There's only been one... Uh, player that has ever won this award twice in the history of Lehigh and Lafayette football. You know who that was? Kim McQuilkin. Absolutely. I was in his Hey, we both got that I... one right. <laughs> Kim and I spent some time together on Thursday evening. Godbolt. And he's on his way, and Godbolt's inside the 20. Too bad you can't give it to somebody on each team, because Eddie Godbolt uh, has just been superb. I can't ever recall, although you may check me if I'm wrong on this, a losing team having the uh, most valuable player you know i'm trying to think of that and i believe art renfro a linebacker from lehigh may have won it in 1966 uh, in a losing effort i i'm not sure about that if uh, ed's got some statistics i, I happen to I... have that from the sports information office uh, at lafayette i know that the award was shared in 76 by gardner of uh, lehigh and mark jones of lafayette well this is 66 now that i'm talking about right 66 was rick craw of lafayette was the winner. Won yeah, the and you're right. Art Renfrew won it, even though Lee I lost the game in 67. Right. 67. I was a year off, but they were the right person. That appears to be the only time in the series, however, that a losing uh, player was awarded the most valuable player award. Lehigh has the ball down at the 13-yard line, trying to get on the board one more time on a second down and four situation. Turning on the option, the ball is given to Godbolt, trying to go inside. He gets down around the 10-yard line. It will be short of a first down. I think uh, one of the remarkable things about this game, uh, at least uh, that I'm trying to recall, is that both teams have pretty much stuck to the starting lineups uh, for the entire 60 minutes. Uh, Lafayette has stayed with Novak, Coyos, and Williams at quarter half and uh, running back. With the exception of Gatehouse moving in and out with plays, he's been in most of the time. And Lehigh's backfield, for the for the large part, have been Osler, LaSelver, and Godbold. Ball is given to Godbold, and he is close to the first down at the nine-yard line. Godbold now has 208 yards on the day. Matter of fact, Jerry, has anyone else been in, in that backfield besides Godbold and Osler? To my knowledge, no. I, I have not seen anybody else come in other than possibly a passing down. Eddie Gobble is going to be one tired individual at the end of this game. You know, when it comes to uh, keeping first teams in and so forth, I've never worked out what the actual etiquette is on that situation. Is the losing coach supposed to concede and send in reserves, or is the winning coach supposed to send in reserves? I wasn't sure there was etiquette. <laughs> I always thought in the old days, at least, if you if you at least made an appearance, you won a varsity letter. Do they still do that? In the big traditional games, I know back years ago, at least in high school football, if you got in for one play in the big traditional game, you got yourself a varsity letter. They do that in college anymore? I don't think so. <laughs> Injured Lehigh player is Scott Spade. He's a senior from Harleysville, PA, played at Soderton High School, has a fine career at Lehigh. It certainly didn't end it on a on a big note as it relates to a score today, but uh, Scott's been a fine offensive guard for Lehigh. We have a fourth down in one situation, and Lehigh packs the backfield with the starting three that have been in the entire football game. The pitch goes to Godbolt, 
He's got the first down, and he's got a little bit more inside the 10, and he's down around the three-yard line. You see the pitch wide. Last time they tried to go inside and fumble. This time they went wide. John Osler threw a nice block on the outside, and Godbolt cut up inside. I haven't seen anybody quit out on that field, although the score is somewhat lopsided. Well, Everybody's Lehigh going has full been blast. held to one touchdown only one other time this year. That's in the first game of the season, and so they'd like to at least get that second, but Godbolt runs out of running room around the three-yard line.